last hours of December 29th, 1972, a jetliner with 163 passengers and 13 crew members crashed in the Everglades just outside of Miami. This is the true story of that crash and of the legend that grew up about the incredible aftermath. Throughout the aviation world, it is still spoken of as the ghost of Flight 401. It's almost New Year's Eve, and you're letting out all my steam. You know, we don't have to spend every New Year's Eve together. What'd you say, honey? I have bad feelings, Don. It's all that eggnog last night. I didn't have any eggnog last night. Oh? <laughs> then how come you were asleep at 10? Boredom. Boredom, huh? I'll get you for that. There you are. Oh, boy. Mm. Thank you. Oh, boy. Hmm? Now that I got my heart started again. <laughs> Dom, don't go today. Hmm? Call in sick. We'll go to the beach or take in a movie. Why? Oh, I don't know. I, uh, I don't want to be alone today. Alone? Huh. With those monsters? <laughs> Ooh. Why don't you ever use the nice smelling stuff that I bought you? I did once, but a passenger tried to pick me up. Well, that's very flattering. No, because it was a guy. <laughs> no, thanks. I'm going to stick with my bay rum. Ooh. Please now, don't go. Oh, come on. For me. Sweetheart. And you know, I've never called in sick when I wasn't. Come to think of it, I never even <laughs> played hooky in school. <laughs> I didn't even cheat on a test. <laughs> uh, I guess I'm just what you call overly responsible. Yeah. That's the way I'm made, honey. Yeah. <laughs> what about your wife? Did you ever cheat on your wife? Well, I just said I was responsible, not a fanatic. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Ow! Ooh, you. What a memo, you, my 
Please. Thanks. Hello, Jordy. What's up? So you and Maria coming on Sunday? Sunday? You know, New Year's Eve, my place, booze, broads, funny hats, capiche? Oh, Capodanno. Capisco, signor, si. Yeah, you're Marcello Mastriani impression, right? So, you gonna be there? I ever let you down, signor Evan Howard? stewardess in me needs to know what to bring New Year's Eve. <laughs> Your old man and a good appetite. Okay. Hey, Jordy. The turnaround is 9 o'clock, isn't it? I think I can uh, verify that for you, lady. Hey, is that the kids? Yeah, I don't see them enough. Well, you can babysit any time you want to. Yeah, I'm friendly, not a masochist. Hey, here we go. Uh, he's doing it at 11.32 if he doesn't have a date. Jordy, why don't you just go fly a kite? It's one of those sheepskin coats, you know, with the with the suede and, and, and the fur. I can get about $200 off if you want one. Well, what would I do with a sheepskin coat in Miami? I know, but uh, look, we've been married for nine years, and you don't have a fur coat yet. Dom, I don't know how to break this to you, but sheepskin isn't exactly the same thing as fur. But it's a bargain, honey. I love you for thinking about me, but really, we could use the money for something we need. Really, we can. OK. Thank you. Are you coming right home? Yep, about one o'clock. Now, don't you wait up. Yes, I will. Dom? Yeah? I love you. I, l I love you, too.
and welcome aboard Atlantic Southeastern Airlines Flight 401 to Miami. Now I'd like to direct your attention to the stewardesses in the aisles who will demonstrate the safety procedure on board our new L-1011. I'm not troubleshooting this flight. This is strictly unofficial. I'm deadheading back. Uh, escrow's closing on a new house my wife and I bought, so I gotta get back. Where, Miami? Yeah, the company's had me in New York all week. Here you go. I think this is the one you wanted. Excuse me, did you get the maid again? Well, anybody want anything from the galley? Yeah. I'll take Prissy. Oh. <laughs> I'll come back to you guys. <laughs> How about dinner? I'll have the chicken, and uh, my wife will have the beef. All right. Hey, lots of no-shows. Yeah, well, it's the holiday season. Everybody double books. Yeah, well, this is my first time on an L-1011. Yeah? When it's empty, it's uh, really empty. Vacation flight for me. <laughs> You're like me. One vacation in ten years, and you spend half of it flying to Miami. <laughs> You're not kidding. Come, guys, dinner? Uh, two beef, please. All right. Uh, uh, Miami Day JC. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ron Smith, class of 69. Christy Frazier. <laughs> yeah. Am I supposed to know you? Well, yeah. Uh, I saw you around campus. Oh, yeah. That's nice. Honeymoon flight, yeah? Um, just ended. <laughs> just be <begin. laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Ah, gonna get fat, buddy. Hey, I won't tell anybody if you don't. You want a bite? No, thank you. Airlines don't like 200-pound stewardesses. And, uh, when was the last time you saw your knees? Hey, you got to show a little respect, you know. <laughs> See you later. Yep. Hope you choke on your meatballs. That's a no nice. I found the horses. I'm making cab down below. Hey, Bert. You've been to Italy? Yeah. What's it like? It's full of Italians. <laughs> Very funny. I'd like to go on vacation, but I don't know. I don't like to leave the kids, and yet I know Maria wouldn't enjoy herself, you know, if we took them along. Take a nanny. You're rich. Huh. Oh, I'd sure like to go. Florence, Michelangelo's David. You like to look at naked men, huh? And La Scala. Man, I want to hear La Traviata La Scala. <laughs> Somalia, you're a thief, you know that? But now, wait a minute. There's more things in this world, you know, besides rock and roll and, and, and blue movies. You know what the three best things in the world are? No, what? A martini before and a nap after. A martini before and a... <laughs> Welcome to Miami, ladies and gentlemen. The temperature's in the low 70s, and it's beautiful out there tonight. Sure beats that 28 degrees we left behind us in New York. We're in our approach pattern now, and we should be getting into the terminal pretty close to our scheduled arrival time. On behalf of those 10 lovely and capable stewardesses and our crew, thank you for flying Atlantic Southeastern. And, uh, you all come back now, yeah? Miami Control, this is Flight 401, request landing instruction. Landing southeast from 401, Miami Approach, side end. Turn left, heading 1003 from the market. You're cleared, final approach, uh, runway 9 left, Miami. 
Tower 118.3 at the market. Roger. Good morning. Good morning. I got 11.30 p.m. Holiday traffic, they're overworked. <laughs> Just as long as he knows up from down. Miami Tower. This is Atlantic Southeastern 401. Just turned on final. Go ahead, Bert. Put the wheels down. Continuous ignition on, no smoke. Coming on. No smoke. Brake system? Okay. Hydraulic panels checked? 35, 33. Engine cross bleeds are open. Oops. No nose gear. I gotta raise it back up. Damn. Pull it up, Bert. I'm gonna try it down one more time. Drop it. Still no nose gear. We're at 1,500 feet, sir. All correct. Want to tell him we'll pull up and go around for a while? Our Miami Tower, this is Atlantic Southeastern 401. We're going to have to circle. We haven't got a nose gear light. Any bets it's just a signal light? Not from me. Lousy 20 cent bulb, that's what it usually is. Want me to check it out, sir? Yeah, you better. Approach control, okay. Going up to 2,000, 128.6. I can't get at it. I just can't get a grip on it. Atlantic Southeastern 401, Miami approach. Turn left, heading 360, maintain 2,000. Vectors to 9 left, final order. Bird, you better put it on autopilot. Davidson, any ideas? None you don't have, Captain. Don, forget about that light. It doesn't prove anything. Yes, sir. Listen, you better get below in the hell hole. Take a visual. Check that optical sight. Make sure it's lined up on that red line. Can do, Captain. Boy, the guy that christened these electronic bays hellholes were right. There you are, you little devil. I don't see it down here. There's a place you can look. I know, but I can't see the lines. Let me take a crack at it. Right, let's see if we can get this thing out. Maybe we can get up under the pan. Yeah. All right. You see anything? No. I got everything all lined up. I just don't see it. Here, take a look. No. Let's see if we can put some pressure on that. Wait a second. Let me see if I get up. No. Yeah, there's a panel underneath the block. Okay, National 611, you're cleared to descend, over. 
I thought 401 was assigned 2,000 feet. Hey, Chief, I got some six coming in. 401 is at 900 feet. ASA 401, this is approach control. How you doing out there? Uh, okay. We'd like to hold our position for a few minutes more. Roger. Uh, ASA 401, this is approach control. Turn left, 2,000 feet, right? Yeah. Hey! Atlantic uh, Southeastern 401, I've lost you on the radar scope and the transponder. What's your altitude now? Miami approach, this is National 611. Are you missing an airplane? We just saw a big flash over the Everglades. Roger, uh, Coast Guard, this is Miami Approach. We've uh, lost Atlantic Southeastern's Flight 401 from the radar scope. Uh, about 18 miles west, northwest of Miami International. Roger. Put the ready helicopter on the line. Major aircraft crash in the Everglades, 20 miles west of MIA.
Ladies and gentlemen, may we have your attention, please. We regret to advise you that ASA Flight 401 has crashed. We will announce the names and locations of survivors as they are received. ASA representatives will assist you in any possible way. We will arrange for friends and relatives to go immediately wherever hospital is involved. We'd appreciate if you would follow the ASA passenger representative to the lounge area. Good evening, Dom. Hi. Oh, you know, I can never sleep without Dom. I, uh, I tried. I was watching some television, you know, uh, an old movie, but I can never sleep without it. Would you like some coffee? Mm. I'll make you some coffee. Maria? Maria, sit down, please. The plane went down. Oh, Lord. Maria? <gasps> I know there are survivors. I don't know how many or I didn't there, want him to go. I know, I, and I didn't want anyone else to tell you. That's why I came. Oh. Maria, I've got to go back to the office. Val is going to stay here with you. And I've, I've, I've just got to go. Now, Val, honey, look, I'll call you and let you know where and when and how and... Oh. Maria, there are survivors. Okay, I'll call. Get you to the hospital, but you gotta keep still. Hey, some. What's that? Hellhole. Uh, it's all right, buddy. We'll get you out of there.
Stockwell. Samoa's in Hialeah Hospital. I, I can account for seven stewardesses. No, no, make that eight. That's eight out of ten dead. No, there's no ID on the infant. Look, there's there's uh, there's more confirmed dead. There's a uh, uh, Ross Ross Messina, Miss Pauline Osborne, uh, Mary Smith. Their husbands at the hospital. Uh, Saul Saul Hoverman. Uh, uh, a Pat Gissels and a Stephanie Stanich, both confirmed dead. They, uh, they were stews. I, I used to fly with them a while back. Look, uh, would you let me call you back on this? Look, you haven't... You have no idea what's going on here. I mean, we have God knows how many more dead still buried in a in a foot of mud. The morgue can't handle what's already in. Well, just give me a minute! Uh, <laughs> look, I, I'm sorry. It's, uh, it's not easy, you see, I, okay? All right, um, <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Mr. And Midger, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Edgar Willows, uh, Mr. Gail Jones, uh, Dr. Stanley Perlman, uh, John Fellman. Chrissy, it's gonna be fine. 
to survive. To survive. All those people. Don't die. All those people. transitory life of ours until our work is finished and we too are called to the throne of the good shepherd to be received into the glory of heaven through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
Chrissy. Jordy, how you doing? Good, how are you? Fine. Can I borrow your bicycle tomorrow? Huh? <laughs> sure. Well, how are you gonna with the, you know? The cast comes off tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> bad time, isn't it? Gotta get these legs in shape. Well, from the looks of the other one, um, you're doing fine. Jordy. This is, um, the place, right? Yeah, yeah, right. Um, that's where all the parts are stored. The FAA has signed a release so we can use some of the parts in other planes. I'd like to go in there with you. You ready for that? Look, Jordy, when I woke up in the hospital, I just thought, I'll never fly again, never. All I could think about was the, just the crash and, and the people, and I said, never again. And then? No, no. I want to. I want to go back. I, as soon as my cast is off, I want to go back. So I want to go in there. I, I, I want to see it. How about it? OK? OK, come, come on. Is it always this dark in here? Yeah, what's to see? All of this from 401? Yeah, you see, uh, when a plane crashes, sometimes the parts are scattered in a thousand pieces. Others are left without a scratch. It's like all the people inside, right? Yeah, Chrissy. I don't think you're quite ready for this. Let's go, huh? No. That's the galley. That's where I was with Dom right before we Chris, crashed. Come on, let's go. Oh, Jordy, why? Why did it have to happen? Prissy, I mean, Prissy, Prissy, Prissy. Listen, happen? Prissy. These things happen. It's circumstance. It's situation. Now, the FAA suspects... Hi, right, come. Uh, yeah, what do you say, Dutch? It's all functional? All tested? Cleaned? Yeah, the, uh, the bulkheads from the hellhole there, right? That's right. Where's Somali? Look, hey, Dutch, look, I'm gonna hurry in. Here's a release. Here's the requisitions from blind maintenance for half the parts. Just that easy, eh? Huh? You need parts? You got parts. The parts didn't down the plane, you know? Yeah, fine. Why so irritable, Dutch? Because when a plane goes down, I take it as a personal insult. You're too pretty and too young to be remembering what you're remembering. Let's clean this warehouse out. Come on. OK. Yeah, thanks a lot. Come on. What is this? Everybody in this airline switched to Bay Rum? <laughs> Been smelling it for weeks. I know. Yeah. Hey, uh, excuse me, huh? I've got someone here. I'll get at you. Bye-bye. You sure you want to go through with this? I'm not the type of person to sit around the apartment and do nothing. Yeah, but you quit once already to sit around the apartment. Jordy, when you stop flying, that's when I stop flying. But you didn't like it, right? Neither mm. do I. Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah, Dutch, what can I do for you? Ride harder. Your signature for number three engine chassis didn't go through the carbon. So Xerox the original. You do things by the book, you know. OK, I'll buy harder pencils. Right. Hey, Captain, you hear any of those stories about the parts from 401? No, what stories? Uh, never mind, Captain. They're just stories. Just stories. OK, see you later. Right. You're not afraid any itinerant millionaire might pick me up, are you? Haven't they already in the past? Huh? Well, a few. A 
At least they claim to be millionaires. And? Money can't buy everything, Jody. Yeah? Like what? Poverty. All right, come on, I've got work to do. On your feet. Give us a kiss, huh? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. What's with a record player? I don't know. I keep pressing all the wrong gizmos on this thing. Oh, Prissy, I'll help you find the right gizmo. And you, lover boy, you were supposed to bring, uh, what's her name with a great big, uh... Oh, yeah. really a maid. Yeah. 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 Well, I was gonna bring her, but she's just a little too crazy. Because she's dating you? No, that's not crazy. It's just bad taste. No, no, crazy, really. I mean, she swears she saw Dom's ghost. I mean, she swears she saw it. Swears it was Dom. Goodbye, Aurelia May. <laughs> Where'd she see Dom's ghost? You know, Aurelia May is from Muscle Shoals, Alabama. She had a very deprived childhood. Bill, where'd she see Dom's ghost? Oh, on the plane. In first class. I mean, he's got style. Yeah. <laughs> what was he doing? Whatever ghosts do. Haunt, I guess. <laughs> he was haunting. Look, you guys. Marge Elder saw him, too. Last week on flight 201. Terrific. Now we've got an epidemic of hysterical stewardesses. That's a chauvinistic statement if I ever heard one. I'm a chauvinist. Any more? Dory Klein and Mary Long. You know about this? Why don't you tell me? I'm not the company snitch. And since when are you a chauvinist? Listen, Val, you could have talked... Wait a second, wait a second. I'm not your messenger. Oh, boy. We get to watch their very first quarrel. Hey, come on, I mean it. We can't have this kind of hysterical... Uh, is this ghost only seen on Atlantic Southeastern Airlines? Right, terrific. The only airlines with a resident ghost. I mean, we couldn't get a worse rumor going if we hired the kamikaze pilots. I thought we did. Hey, now, listen. You, I mean, all of you guys, you've got to stop these kind of rumors before the brass hears about it. Because we can go and talk to the Stoos and tell them to shut up? I hate to puncture your masculine pride, but uh, some of these rumors come from cockpit crews. Then it would be in the logs. Yeah, well, we'll check them. Right, honey? <laughs> right. We can all waltz down to records and check the logs. Not afraid a steady and an hysterical pilot might have seen it, are you? Okay, wise guy. We'll check the logs. Uh, not unless you want to be embarrassed. Jordy, how's the man behind the desk? You too, huh? I'm beginning to think I'm the company joke. Better than being the company ghost. Okay. Okay. Yes, I heard. And thank you for taking me to dinner to break the news gently. But I've heard from three different people. I'm sorry, Maria. What are you going to do about the stories? Ignore them. Ignore them, are you? Well, just downplay them, you know, try to stop them. Now, what you're doing is protecting me and my kids, and I love you for it. I have to tell you something. And I don't know what it means, and I don't expect you to believe me, but at night when I turn off the light, I feel him beside me. 
and it's warm and wonderful. And Jordan? I can finally sleep again. <clears throat> what are you trying to tell me, Maria? That, that Dom isn't dead or that his ghost stalks Miami? I'm telling you about a feeling that I'm having, and I am suggesting that perhaps you open your mind a little bit. All right. What am I trying to say? Tom wasn't a kid when we got married, right? He was very nervous about making that kind of commitment to me and to a family because of his age. But he did it, and we had the children, and thank God for it. And then he died. And his final words were about his children and his family and not being there for us. And now, by some miracle, I feel his presence like he's with us, seeing us through the bad times. I don't know how to explain it. It's a feeling. Maybe when he sees that we're all right, that we're going to make it, he'll go on. But right now, it's very comforting to me to know that he is here. And I believe that he's here. And you don't know what I'm talking about, do you? Look, Maria, I'd like, I'd like to believe that when we die, we don't die. I, I'd enjoy believing in some kind of immortality. But as far as I see it, I, I, I I just think it's the fear of dying and being forgotten. You don't believe in God? I'm an agnostic. I don't know what I don't believe. There's a pressure leak. Oh, it feels so weird. The temperature says 72 degrees. Well, it couldn't be. I mean, it's, it must be broken. I'll go up and report. Are you coming up? Yeah, better. Bill, there's a temperature drop in the galley. There's no pressure leak. Oh, it's freezing down there. There's no temperature drop. Well, you come down, take a look. All right. Welcome come down, take a look. Well? I didn't imagine it, Bill. Oh, oh okay, it's fine now. Yeah? It's fine now. Hmm. Ladies? It was okay. It was? Okay, normal. Do you know that Stu, um, uh, from Baton Rouge, Brina Coleman? Mm -hmm. She called the main office in Atlanta and reported seeing the ghost. And they sent it to the company shrink. Yeah. Company policy, I guess, huh? Did anybody check the log? Well, they tried to, but the company replaced it with a new one. They replaced it with a new one? Yeah. Come on, we've got meals to get out. I'm going to take these up. Look it out.
How was your day? Does this mean you're angry? You got notice, huh? I'm a red sandals. I don't have them on us. They're, they're too narrow for me. Oh, come on, Val. I couldn't have it. It was in the log. You put it there. There was no way I could take it out. You could have defended me against those idiots, you know. You could have told them I'm not in the habit of hallucinating. You could have, you could have said that I was only reporting what another stewardess saw. You could have gone higher up. You could have threatened to quit. You could have done something. Honey, it's not me. Look, half the top floor is ready to can the other half. They've ignored this thing as long as they can, and now they're just, they're just going to roll heads. Well, I'm being first, right? Thank you very much, Mr. Evanhauer. Look, I told them that Prissy saw it. You only reported it. And? And they said, you put it in the log. So I am out of a job, and you are out of a roommate. Look, all you and Prissy have to do is see a shrink. I can't stand people who sweet toothpaste from the bottom. Well, like I said, the important thing is for Prissy to see a shrink, and she will not do so if you don't. And you put both your socks on first, then your shoes. Now the right foot, then the left. Come on. Did you ever stop to think that it might be of some great benefit if, if Prissy were to see a shrink, huh? Listen, just maybe, huh? Just maybe she might need professional help, huh? Come on. Be a friend, hmm? You're shabby, you know. Mm -hmm. Hmm? Do you think all you have to do is put your body next to mine? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? You macho, narcissistic, chauvinist oppressor. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. We'll go talk to the shrink. Okay. Is there anything you wish to discuss, Percy? Anything on your mind? No, I was asked to come here. Yes, I know. They think I'm crazy or something. Do you? I know what I saw. Tell me about yourself. Why? Do you want me to help you? Look, I never said I needed help. I was asked to come here. Chrissy, you say you saw the vision of a man who died in a plane crash. A plane crash from which you yourself narrowly escaped death. I'm sorry I, I said anything about seeing Dom Somali. None of this would be happening. Chrissy, I want to believe you saw what you say you saw. But I need some help. I need to know more about you. Tell me about yourself, your childhood. Tell me about your parents. My mother died when I was nine. I'm sorry to hear that. Mm, she, she'd been sick for a couple of years. Leukemia. I, I remember the night she died, all the nurses were crying and and even the doctors were crying. I never knew doctors cried. Do you think of her often? Oh, yes. I, I feel she's close to me. You know, I know this sounds crazy, but I always feel like she's watching over me. It's a beautiful feeling to have. I remember her. A year after she died, my father put me in the summer camp. And one night I woke up, and she was standing there, smiling at me. And she said, she said, I'll take care of you. Like you saw Simone? Yes. Maybe I saw my mother that night because I was alone, and I was lonely, and I needed her to be near me. The same as the night on the L-1011. Maybe. Because ever since then, I haven't been afraid on the L-1011. I mean, everything's been fine. It's as if he came back to tell us that, that everything was going to be okay. You know, that it, it never happened again. Smoley was well-liked. Just like Mama. I mean, it's so weird. Prissy, I'm going to recommend to your employers that they put you back on duty immediately. Captain Garrick. Hey, Cindy. 
Log time. Uh -huh. You deadheading back? Yeah, I got three days this week. When did you switch to Transcontinental? Right after I left ASA, about three months ago. Same time you lost my number. Hey, wait a minute, Cindy. Wait a minute. This is Transcontinental. Please. Mrs. Kalura. Yes? I'm uh, Captain Garrick. I'm a pilot on another airline. Could I ask you just a few questions? What? The man, what you saw. It was a man? Yes. He was wearing a kind of uniform. A shirt, wh white shirt, black tie. Like a pilot's uniform. I think so. I was so troubled, I, I couldn't I know, it. I know. Let me show you a snapshot, please. Is one of these the man you saw? Yes. Which one? The man in the middle. Mrs. Kalora, if anybody asks you about this, I, I'd appreciate it a lot if you wouldn't say anything about the snapshot. Who is he? He's a friend, Mrs. Kalora. I was there. I mean, Geordie, I mean, you can't pass this off as another hysterical stew. I heard the woman scream. We saw her face. I showed her the picture. Hey. You could have shown her a picture of Teddy Roosevelt. She would have identified. Yeah, but I didn't. I showed her a picture of Dom Simoli. What do you want me to do, Wes? Huh? Have ghost breakers in all the flights? Or, or give out wolf bane with earphones? Hey, how about feature in-flight seances with the movies? Hey, look. Your sighting was on Transcontinental. At least the others have kept Simoli to his own airline. I know, and I haven't figured that out yet, but what I want to do is I want to look through the logs of all the flights where Dom was reported. No can do. Come on, you know where they are. You can get to them. Yeah, I can get fired. You want me to go to the press? <laughs> you want me to go to the brass? You'll be flying from Baton Rouge to Shreveport the rest of your natural life. So now you're the perfect company man, huh? Yeah, nobody's perfect. You know, Jody used to care. Used to care about all of us. Now I don't think I know you anymore. Yeah, like I said, nobody's perfect. That's really wonderful, us. And there's nothing like good, healthy metatarsals. Oh, metatarsals. He's my favorite Greek author. <laughs> okay. There it is. Oh, it's cute. Hey, baby. This is your captain. We hope you're enjoying your flight aboard Atlantic Southeastern Airlines. We certainly enjoy having you aboard. We will be arriving in Mexico City in about an hour. In fact, we may even be on time. And I'd like to remind those of you who are going to Mexico City for the first time, and those of you who are not going on to Acapulco with us, that uh, Mexico City is 6,000 feet above sea level. The air is a little bit thinner there, so you may find that your pulse quickens with very little exertion. Take your time, get accustomed to the altitude, and enjoy your holiday or your business trip, or whatever it is.
Yes, it brings you from New York to Mexico. Thank you. This airplane, Bill. Oh, they've got. They've got. Oh, they've got. Well. <laughs> uh, just uh, everything I am. Everything I ever believed. Believed in. Every concept I ever had about life after death, it's just, there's no way that I saw it. I just, it's not, it's not. Engine number one, cut out. Uh, shut it down. Retract, landing gear, lower flaps, 20 degrees. Mexico City Control, this is ASA flight number 422 inbound your station with an emergency. Request emergency equipment on standby. And request clearance to use runway 90 for straight in approach. <laughs> There's going to be fire on this plane. He spoke to you? He said, watch out for fire on this plane, Bill. <laughs> OK, gear down and check for lock. Bill? Fire is out number one. Really saw him? It's like saying, aside from that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play? Yeah, I know. Jordy, Bill saw him. Val saw him. Dana saw him. They're not weirdos and kooks. Yeah, but the power of the mind is suggest oh, certain phenomena. Oh, stop I want to see the logs, Jordy. I want to find out where the salvage parts of the 401 went. Come on. I called the newspapers already. They've got the story. Hey, now, wait a minute. This is not some high school play. We're dealing with a multi-million dollar business, and we're dealing with the credibility of the American public. People are frightened enough of flying as it is. I don't care about your accountant mentality. I want the records. Oh, just knock that off. What about the transcontinental sighting? That wasn't even our flight. 
That plane, Jordy, was leased from us. That was our L-1011. Okay. Okay, I'll examine the record. We want to examine them with you. <sighs> Meaning you don't trust me, huh? Meaning you become our corporate executive, Jordy. If us against them stuff, huh? And you become them. Jordy. Thank you, sir. How are you? Fine. Have a chair. Thank you. It's on your mind. Well, sir, it's, um, it's about the ghosts. There are no such things as ghosts, Jordy. Well, yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> no, sir. <laughs> you see, Mr. Bailey, all of the sightings have been on L-1011s, which have been replaced with part salvage from Flight 401. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Yes, sir. <clears throat> it's in here. You see, when Prissy saw uh, Dom's face behind the oven glass door in plane 323, the oven door and that plane had been replaced just before with one salvage from Flight 401. Now, in plane 319, when the ghost or whatever was seen, the lower bay galley had come from the crash. You're telling me that uh, every time the uh, ghost was seen, it was in a plane using spare parts from the wreck? It's documented, sir. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> well, um... Okay, I, I thought if we were to yank out the parts... The keepers are joining the inmates. I'm no less skeptical than you are, Mr. Bailey. You're only trying to tell me that our airlines are haunted. No, sir. I'm trying to tell you that we're talking about pilots. These are technically oriented, pragmatic people with responsible jobs as engineers, people who are trained to be objective and calm in a crisis. Now, sir, replacing logs and issuing self-serving handouts to the media will it's it's just not going to work anymore. We have high hopes for you here, Jordan. I'm thinking of ASA, Mr. Bailey. Now, well, perhaps you are. Well, let me take a look at these. Only those planes with salvage parts? But I don't believe in ghosts either, Mr. Bailey. At least I didn't. <laughs> Try selling this to the board of directors. Les? Les? Yeah, Can I talk to you? Sure, what? I think uh, we should consult a professional. A professional what? Oh, Val, you're kidding. I've been doing some reading. Dom is coming back because of some, some feelings about the crash, and we can put him at rest. Listen, Val, I won't debate the fact that you and the others saw something, but seances, rising tables, squeaking horns? No. We have a responsibility to Maria, to the airlines, Soul. Look, Val, I won't get into a religious discussion with you, but I can't do it. I mean, for one thing, I'd burst out laughing. You know, we need people who are close to him, like you and me and Jordy. And... Jordy? I can see Jordy. Well, if you'll do... agree, maybe he might. Val, then I'm sorry, but I mean, I know you believe this, and I know you mean well, but I, I'm too old to play Halloween.
Flight 793, this is Jacksonville Approach Control. Other aircraft, your area, advise severe electrical storm over Jacksonville. Extreme turbulence, your altitude. Approach with caution. There will never be another crash of an L-1011. Did you hear him? John, did you hear him? Dana, you go tell Val that I changed my mind. Go ahead. Hey, Les, what's happening? Look at this. Great artwork, huh? I saw him, Jody. Yeah, me. I saw him, and I talked to him just like I'm talking to you right now. And what's more, he's on the cabin voice recorder. Fly severe electrical storm over Jacksonville. Extreme turbulence, your altitude. Approach with caution. There will never be another crash of an L-1011. Dear God. seems to be that the consciousness exists apart from the brain or the mind. That's all our fears, joys, anxieties. All these things we feel don't die when the brain does. Uh, what about lust? The question is that if, if consciousness exists somewhere else, in some other plane... As in the fourth dimension, maybe? How about a piece of wire that conducts electrons? The electrons are part of the wire, yet separate from it. You can destroy the wire, but not the electrons. Well, that sounds neat. <laughs> a little droll, maybe. You're the graduate engineer. You took physics in college. Yeah, but I didn't take courses in ghost breaking. Look at this. Nothing is created or destroyed, but only, only changes form. Isn't that a theorem in chemistry? Not exactly, honey. And theorem has nothing to do with ghosts. Well, how do you know? How do you know that the mass of atoms that make up our beings can't be reassembled by thought or will? Do I cease to exist when I leave the room? Simply because we can't touch Dom, does it mean that he doesn't exist? What about God? What about lunch? <laughs> I'm hungry. Suppose that somebody you really respected, somebody you would trust with your life, claimed that he happened to be a medium. Would you listen to him? Bologna. What? Bologna. You want a bologna sandwich? You flew with him to Boston last week. He's Matt Andrews. He was your pilot. Well, remind me never to fly with Matt Andrews again, huh? What did you hear on the cabin voice recorder? It was something that sounded like Samoli's voice. It was Samoli's voice, and you know it. Look, you want to join hands and turn the wine glass upside down? Is that it? We try to communicate with whatever it is who has been trying to communicate with us. Whatever it is. Whatever it is. How about a bologna sandwich? You didn't have any trouble finding the place. Huh? No, no, well, no. we were kind of looking for something a little spookier, like Boris Karloff taking out the trash. <laughs> <laughs> well, my wife is out to the movies, and the kids are banished upstairs. Yeah, we'll hold us to ourselves. Well, sit, sit down, sit down, please. Do you want me to pour the coffee? Mm-hmm, if you like. Cream and sugar? Uh, just cream, no sugar. Thank you. Did either of you ever fly with Simoli? I don't think so, no. They haven't. 
I checked. Listen, we all know what the word medium means to anybody who's not into parapsychology. But if you believe in God, or a life force, or an orderly universe, you already believe in the spiritual. Yeah. Uh, you really don't have to sell me, you see. I'm you here. You do. Because the force of doubt is as strong as the force of belief. Well, then why don't we abort the whole thing? Look, look, Matt. I think this whole thing is just an exercise in hysteria. No, 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 we understand. Let's try to explain it to you. Try to clarify it for you. The ghost of Somali appears only on ASA planes, usually on the L-1011s, where salvage parts in the wreck have been used. Mm -hmm. now, there's a relationship between inanimate objects and people. Psychometry. Right. And we've got a theory for that. We believe that the soul exists. That it continues being after we die. And psychometry ties in with people who die suddenly, prematurely, violently. Whenever people die this way, they stay near familiar objects and places. We also believe that while they're near these places, they somehow manage to jump from one energy field to another, to ours. And when that happens, they can recreate themselves for brief periods of time. What we have to do here is try to imagine ourselves in Dom Simoli's place. In that terrifying instant, at one tiny fraction of a second, when he knew the plane was crashing, he knew he was facing death. The one thought he had was to save the plane. Imagine the shock, the amazement, the it can't be happening, that awesome drive. The one responsibility that every crewman has to all his passengers. But where do all his responses, where are they happening? In the mind? OK. A better word, consciousness. That's right, because we believe the consciousness goes on living. Its cosmic energy is somehow misdirected, thrown out of whack whenever extreme anxiety is involved. The idea is that every now and then, a soul gets trapped between two dimensions. It no longer exists here on Earth, and it hasn't yet found its way to the plane it's destined to reach. It must first fulfill whatever obligations it has here on the Earth. Uh, why don't we get on with it? Okay. I'll get the tape recorder. The purpose of this session is to contact Dom Somoli for any information any help we can give him. See the cockpit. He's puzzled. He's he's showing me something. A light. An instrument light. It's going away. I'm losing him. I'm losing him.
I'm sorry, my concentration is broken. Maybe another time. Look, let's just get it done. Jordy. Come on, if we're gonna do it, let's do it. Okay. But I need a rest for a minute. I'll get some more coffee. Buying this? Hmm, come on, you're the front man for the act. I mean, you take a half a dozen religious philosophies, throw in a pinch of science fiction, spoon feed the lot of us, and you ask me about buying it. Did you know Dom wore glasses? No. Anybody know Dom wore glasses? They knew. Even Maria didn't know about them until she got the bill for them three weeks after the funeral. about a small door and a light bulb. He's afraid the nose wheel's jammed. Uh, not getting anything too clearly now. That small door. It could be trapped. It's the hell hole. I can see a porthole. Round window. Strut. It's the landing gear strut. The retract lugs are straight. Everything's normal. It's cold in there. Is that a passageway? I see his flashlight. It's hitting something. Below. Below the landing gear strut. It's black. But reflecting like the moonlight. It's a swamp. The Everglades. You can feel the wind. You can smell the damp. The damp. The water. Coming up. Coming up. Coming up around the plane. We're in a descent. We're no longer at 2,000. Buddy, ten. The gear is down. All the dying. The gear is down. I feel the spray. All the, all the weight. The body. spirit now. There's no longer any need to remain here. As you walk toward the light, there are many who will help you. Dom, you can leave. We understand. Let go. Let go. Let go. You no longer belong to the Earth. You're not needed on the earth. The crash is over. It was a series of circumstances. There's nothing you can do about it. Flight 401 is finished. He's moving away from us. He's being helped. Moving toward the light. Some of those who saw the ghost feared open discussion would jeopardize their jobs. The logbooks were replaced. Access to them was denied by the airline. However, salvaged parts installed in other L-1011s were ordered removed. Since the sole rescue, 
which took place in the late winter of 1974 in the New England home of an airline pilot. Not a single reappearance of the ghost of Flight 401 has been reported. Thank you.